Welcome to One for the Money, the weekly talk show with interviews you can use. I'm national financial columnist and talk show host, Steve Savant. And on today's show, your social security benefits. There are so many seniors who are not maximizing their benefits and leaving real money on the kitchen table. Today, we're gonna to bring you up to speed on your social security and possibly place more money in your pocket. After all, it is your money. And to help us understand social security benefits and generate the most income throughout retirement, national financial columnist and professional instructor, Ken Davis, CPA and certified financial planner and social security expert, all here on One for the Money. Ken. Hey, Stephen. Good to see you. I'm so happy that you're on our show. I've had Ken on on so many other of our broadcasts online, and Ken is a certified financial planner, as I said in my introduction, as well as a CPA. And we're talking about Social Security, and one of the reasons we want to talk about this is this is such an important issue. I mean, with all the talk that's going on in the debt ceiling, the sequester, this is all going to somehow, some way, eventually fall on the table of Congress. Somebody's going to have to do something about this. But right now, we want to make sure that all of our viewers understand all the perks, the provisions, and all the advantages of Social Security. And Ken, I have to say, I was reading your brief for the introduction for our first segment, and it said here, the average worker, the average worker, leaves $14,000 on the table that they didn't tap. I was in shock. Well, and, and the point there is that some people might think that what we're talking about today doesn't affect them. Well, average worker, I mean, that's blue collar, white collar, every kind of collar across mm -hmm. the United States leaves $14,000 of lifetime benefit from Social Security on the table because they don't understand the rules. And admittedly, the rules are rather complex. And I have to admit to you, even with the four credentials that I have, it was only until recently that I fully understood the additional benefits mm. that people can take care ad, advantage of. And I want to let our, our listeners know that while the rules are complex, the concepts are actually relatively easy mm -hmm. and they can add a lot of money to their pocketbook. And, and a lot of our clients that make a little more money are, are well into the fifty to $100,000 additional lifetime benefits. So. I mean, I don't see much on the internet or on the Social Security page that actually, the, the government's page that actually points this out. And that's why I'm kind of, I, I kind of want to get into some of the, the things that we can touch on because these provisions are for you. I mean, we paid into it. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. should be receiving it. Now, it kind of shocked me. I read this uh, this little article on the web on the Senate, the Tennessee senator who basically, or a House of Representatives, basically says, "Hey, there's really no obligation." Uh, I, that kind of bothered me, mm -hmm. right? That the government. What do you mean they have no obligation? We've been paying into this. This is why I don't like the phrase entitlement when it's attached to Social Security because we actually contributed. And by the way, if you're a W-2 employee, your employer also contributed to your retirement. Well, that's exactly right. We have a right to these benefits and. And it's interesting as we go through this and start to see some of the benefits that we can capture, people, you know, sometimes wonder, well, you know, is this real? Is this something I should be taking advantage of? Well, I can tell you that some of the provisions that allow us to do the things we did were changed as recently as the year 2000. Hmm. This is not some sort of provision that was sitting there as a loophole. This Congress specifically put some of these uh, provisions into the law to mm -hmm. allow us to do certain things and, and it's just we discovered them and understand them and know how to use them properly. Now we used to and I, and I was reading some of your uh, other material on Social Security we used to do this based on one life and that's the old way of calculating Social Security. What's the new way? Well let's talk about that you know whenever you talk to people I think like 60 percent of the people elect early uh, Social Security at 62 and that's a huge mistake and, and I'll tell you why that's a huge mistake, is the old way of doing it is, oh, it may not be around, and what if I die, and all that other stuff. Well, we listen to those concerns, and we're going to address them in the show, to show people how to get the maximum they can get and still deal with some of their issues. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, I, I would really like our listeners to keep an open mind and say there are some other ideas here that I didn't know about that it could benefit. The, the old idea was, if I defer my benefits so I can get higher income, then when I do start getting the higher income, how many years does it take me to recover mm -hmm. that? Well, we're gonna show techniques today that will reduce that amount of time to recover substantially and show them why they should still go ahead and do that. So well, I think this is, this is kind of news to me. I mean, we're talking about a law and a legislation that was done 
12 years ago, 13 mm -hmm, years mm -hmm, ago, mm -hmm. that people are just coming, becoming aware of. So if we're, we're right at the edge of taking Social Security, and I have to say yours truly is right on the outer markers here, uh, and I'm thinking, wow, I'm so glad, Ken, that we talked about this on one of our other broadcasts, and I wanted to bring this to our consumers, our viewership, because One for the Money is all about having people maximize their income, especially for retirement, and this is a big pillar in a lot of Americans' retirement plan. You know, I had to ask myself the question, why hadn't I heard about this? Why aren't? Why isn't this doing be, being done routinely by CPAs, financial planners, whatever? And there's really a couple things. I, my observation of after studying law for years is it takes a while for law to percolate out into the advisor community and then to, to clients. It takes a while for us to all get educated on what our rights and opportunities are is number one. And number two, quite frankly, you have to have a decent piece of software that can make the hundreds of calculations necessary. You know, our, our consumers don't have to do it. We simply put some data in and we have number crunching calculators that will tell us what the, the key point that they should elect their benefits. And then what's going to be surprising is that we can not only elect benefits, but switch to something else. And we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. what we can switch to today. Well, I just saw some of the numbers that you were putting out on how many possible permutations there are. And that's why you need the software to calculate what's the best benefit for you. Well, let's make it simple for our viewers. Uh, this works mostly for either married couples or, or surprisingly couples that were married mm -hmm. at least 10 years or more and now divorced. They can actually utilize these things as a couple even though they're divorced, which is surprising to me and exciting to a lot of people that are in that situation. But basically, husband has nine different years that they can elect. The wife has mm -hmm. nine years that they could elect. And when you multiply nine times nine, that's 81 combinations. Well, that's too much. When we come back, we're going to talk about all this with Ken Davis, CFP. Did you know the average 401k runs out of money just seven to eight years into retirement? Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and many other publications have warned of the difficulty of saving with a 401k. But what if there was a way to create tax-free lifetime retirement income with no stock market risk? Good news, there is. You know, living in fear of the next market dive is not the way I want to live my life. Why would I go out there and take on risk when I don't need to? I have a lot less stress knowing I can't lose any more of my retirement savings in the stock market. Call now to receive your free, no-obligation analysis of what this retirement vehicle could do for you. A comparison to your current retirement plan and a free video that explains this exciting opportunity. Start planning a retirement you can enjoy instead of worrying about future tax increases and stock market losses. Creating income that will last your entire life is the most important thing you'll ever do. Take control of your future. Call now for your free analysis, comparison, and video. Well, welcome back to our segment. I'm Steve Savannah, our host here. And, of course, our guest, Ken Davis, CFP and Certified Financial Planner. We're talking about Social Security. Ken, I have to say, first segment. A lot of blue-collar Americans are leaving 14,000, somewhere in that vicinity, and some of our more affluent Americans that are doing Social Security have been contributing to Social Security may have be leaving up to six figures. Mm -hmm. I mean, that seemed outrageous. Let's talk a little bit about the beneficiaries and the people who can play in this because we're, we know now that after this 2000 legislation, we have the ability to really maximize our benefits. And I want to know who are the people that are going to benefit from this? Well, basically, the, the the planning, the switching strategies, the elections, and the timing primarily are designed for married couples or people that were married for at least 10 years or more. And that could be several marriages. You could have several marriages of 10 years or more, and you actually get to pick from the best of those. You can't have all of them at the same time, but you get to pick the best of the of the okay, bunch. Okay, I'm sorry, I can't let that go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so if I was married three times and at least a minimum of 10 years, and my spouse was working or you know whatever or had worked yeah. or had worked i could pick the one that's going to deliver the best for the partial switching option that's right and and we're getting ahead of ourselves a little okay. bit Let, let's get back to the basics so we keep it simple everybody knows that if you work and you qualify for mm -hmm. social security you get your primary worker retirement benefit that's what we're all pretty much familiar with some of us might be aware of the fact that we could have a spousal benefit that was designed originally for those uh, homemakers in, in our more traditional culture that we've evolved from, mm -hmm. where the, the wife might have stayed home, in some mm -hmm. cases now the husband, and didn't work, didn't qualify, and needed some income from their spouse. And, and those are called, called spousal benefits. And then there's survivor benefits, which is 
I was married, I helped build my family, raised the kids, and now my spouse has passed away. What am I going to do? Where do I live? Well, that's a survivor benefit. So we have three benefits, mm. the worker benefit, the spousal benefit, and retirement benefit. Mm. And how that works is a spousal benefit, because the spouse is, is still alive, they say, okay, we're going to give you up to 50% of the income that your spouse has earned. So, you know, wife goes to husband, husband's is 2000 a month, mm. then she could qualify as one of the now, is options. This, is this the full retirement age? This, this is at full retirement age of 66, mm -hmm. it's currently, and it's changing. So mm -hmm. you have to, you know, you have to. Find out when you were born. And, may, and any of the stuff, you have to really work with an sure. advisor. Don't try to do this on your own. You're not going to get there appropriately. You might make some mistakes. Mm -hmm. So my age 66, up to 50%, as early as 62. Hmm. Okay. And to do spousal benefits, both parties have to be 62. But I, I don't want to get too, too mm -hmm. detailed. The second one, the more important one, and it, especially in older ages, is let's say you're in an assisted living care center and your husband or wife has passed away, you can take up to 100%, up to 100% of what their benefit was. So let, let me give you an example. Hmm. Uh, Mary was a school teacher. Her benefits under Social Security is $1,500 a month. Uh, she, you know, Harry just died a few years ago. He was a pipe fitter and he's making 2000 a month in Social Security. Well, Mary elected her 1500 and, and, and Harry had his 2000 and Harry dies. Well, Mary may not know that she can now go down and switch from her 1500 to the 2000 because mm -hmm. she gets 100% of Harry's. Surprisingly, and this, this just blows my mind, let's say that Mary uh, was married to uh, George early in life, had some kids with George, raised them, and then they went their separate ways and George was a doctor. And George's benefit is 2400 and a month after Harry dies, George dies, she gets to pick the 2000 from Harry or the 2400 from George. And, and, and people don't know this, and we pay for it. It's part of the legislation. This is not some loophole. This is specifically put in there. The rules are clear. Mm -hmm. You can look on the ssa.gov website. And look under survivorship mm -hmm. benefits. I'm not making this up. It's true. If you call the Social Security Administration, they're lovely, wonderful people, and they will help you compute those numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, what they don't talk about and really haven't been trained is to switch. Mm -hmm. So Mary can switch to those, and there's more complex strategies, but that kind of mm -hmm. sets the T to, to let people understand some of how this works. Well, what I got out of that little segment was that you should keep tabs on your ex. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you need to know who they are, where they went, and so yeah. forth. Yeah. And they, you don't need your permission to do this, right? I mean, no, this and it doesn't hurt the them. It doesn't, doesn't take anything them. away from them. Right. They don't need to know you're doing it. They don't need, you don't need their permission or signature. Well, when I think about it, we're looking at different demarcation lines, age 62, age 66, mm -hmm. and then age 70. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the maximum benefits because a lot of people are really holding back on their RMDs. The maximum benefit is, let's, let's say you get 2,000 at age 66. That's your full mm -hmm. retirement age. Early retirement of 62 is only 1,500. Mm -hmm. It's a 25% hit. Now, 8% per year increase from 66 to age 70 adds 32% additional. So that 2000 becomes $2,640 a month versus early retirement of 1500 That's worth doing some planning around. And because you have some partial benefits between that time, mm -hmm. there's places to play here. That's right. Well, I like all this. This is what we're trying to do is map out a strategy for you. We want to bring you into an educational mode so that you can then say, wow, Steve, that wasn't that hard to learn. Mm -hmm. And we have all kinds mm -hmm. of material and support educational pieces that will really help you put yourself in a position to make the right choices. And again, you need a professional to do it. We're going to come right back and continue with Social Security right after the break. Did you know the average 401k runs out of money just seven to eight years into retirement? Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and many other publications have warned of the difficulty of saving with a 401k. But what if there was a way to create tax-free lifetime retirement income with no stock market risk? Good news, there is. You know, living in fear of the next market dive is not the way I want to live my life. Why would I go out there and take on risk when I don't need to? I have a lot less stress knowing I can't lose any more of my retirement savings in the stock market. Call now to receive your free, no-obligation analysis of what this retirement vehicle could do for you. A comparison to your current retirement plan and a free video that explains this exciting opportunity. Start planning a retirement you can enjoy instead of worrying about future tax increases and stock market losses. 
houses. Creating income that will last your entire life is the most important thing you'll ever do. Take control of your future. Call now for your free analysis, comparison, and video. Well, welcome back to our third segment. We're going to prep all about Social Security with Ken Davis, Certified Financial Planner and CPA. I want to be able to talk about some of the things we talked about, but before I go on too far, I mentioned RMDs, required minimum distributions. A lot of people are starting to wait to 70 because they really don't need the money and they are thinking about taking their Social Security at 70, their RMDs at 70, to really have quite a, a powerful income coming in because you have to take out your required minimum distributions anyways. Well, and the power of IRAs and, and tax deferral is the longer you can defer, the, the more value there mm -hmm. is in that account. So uh, if you can do that, it works. I want to talk about some of the objections and sometimes the pitfalls. We kind of want to navigate that in this segment. Ken, walk us through some of this because there are a few minefields here we want to be mindful of. <laughs> <laughs> we, we talked about the fact that uh, some people are concerned about Social Security still being around. Mm -hmm. I, and I have to admit, I have those concerns as well. What I've read recently in preparation for the show is that the actuaries, the government itself, and actuaries are these, these egghead types of mm -hmm. mathematicians that go through all the numbers. They say that it'll last at least till 2037, and even after that, when that fails, potentially, it doesn't go away. It drops from 100% to 75%. It's a 25% reduction. Under current circumstances, it will continue to maintain itself. I think it's likely in, in discussing with other advisors that we'll either see younger generations, probably below 55, push their retirement date out further, mm -hmm. because we're all living a lot longer, right, and it's right. likely that it'll be more like 70 or something at that point in the future. So they'll find ways to shore it up, I'm, I, I believe. But in the meantime, uh, that's what, you know, another 24 years. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, and, and those that are in their 60s now uh, should be just fine. So I think that's what, that it's a valid objection, however, I, I think it's been overblown. Now, a lot of people object. Say, I, I love your tactical thinking in the second segment, Ken. It was great, but what if I die before I max out those benefits? And I think that's one of the more valid things: is what if you defer your benefits so that you can get that higher right. benefit? What do you do about that? Well, interestingly enough, the additional income that we create with the spousal benefits, some of the strategies we're doing. I, I ran this, some numbers for an age 62 year old person for a 10 year term and it's like 30, 40, 50 bucks a month per person, mm. and, and that's just for standard health. That isn't an exceptional health. So there are some e cheap, inexpensive solutions just to, to gap, take care of that gap mm -hmm. for a short period of time, very inexpensive, that can deal with that issue. So if they do die early, there's a $100,000 life insurance benefit that comes out either to the spouse or the heirs. What about our use of uh, other planning, qualified plans, maybe some other our retirements, maybe money sitting on the side? Does that work at all with Social Security? Because I remember when we first built the, well, when the legislation first came out, really Social Security wasn't taxed. So there's some issues here. Well, there are. And what, what I did was, I actually ran this last week, where I said, okay, what if I defer and I use some of my other money? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to be better off or worse off yeah. by deferring my Social Security. And the growth is so high by deferring, it's just, it's impossible to ignore. You can't recreate this with regular assets. At half a percent in CDs, and people scared of the oh. stock market, uh, taking some of your money that's in other types of assets to cover that eight years from 62 to 70, the, the additional benefits are so large, it's impossible to ignore. Mm -hmm. I actually was able to run some numbers and quantify that, and it verified what my, my thoughts would be. And, and yes, that works. Mm -hmm. so, so again, we have so many strategies that we have to go through to make sure we can custom fit this to the client and, and their spouse. And this is why I like it, because there's so many permutations to this and possible avenues to go down so that we can make sure we're maximizing our benefits. And like you said, I just want to cover any kind of minefields that we're talking about, and you just named a couple of them here. Now, l let me ask you this. I'm looking at this. Well, you talked about the sovereignty and some of these things. I'm wondering in regards to when we're looking at running Social Security permutations, and I'm going to use some of my partial benefits at 62. Let's say mm -hmm. I want to just, I might as well just take it, right, if I, if I have it, if I, if I want it. If I want to use some of those partials to get me to age 70, to kind of help supplement. Well, let's talk about an example because it's easier for our listeners to, and viewers to understand. Let's go back to that example. 2,000 at full retirement, 1,500 early, and then, um, uh, you know, an extra 32% mm -hmm. at uh, 2,640 at age 70. Well, while we're deferring our own benefit, these rules allow me to actually 
claim a spousal benefit. So in that example, let's say that uh, Harry again, is uh, his benefit would be $2,000. Uh, the, the wife, Mary, would be $1,500. Mm. Well, she can take half of Harry's when she's 66. She can take half of Harry's, mm -hmm. which would be $1,000 a month. So she gives up $2,000 a month in that example that I started with. And she's now taking a thousand, so she's deferring about a thousand a month. But she's really actually getting an extra benefit. Mm. That's the really key here. She's getting an extra benefit. If you don't use a strategy, you lose it. Mm. So she's going to take her her spousal benefit of a thousand a month to age seventy, and then mm -hmm. she's going to switch to the two thousand six hundred and forty. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, she's going to use some sort of other asset to live on. In the meantime so that she can get that 2,640. Mm -hmm. Harry, in that example, also gets to defer his if he wants to all the way to age 70. Well, these are huge strategies. And again, you'll be able to go out to our website, onefortheMoney.tv, and we're going to talk about all this. We have a huge supporting, supporting material. We come back from the break. We're going to talk to you about how do we go through it. We've talked about preparation. Now we're going to say this is how you do it and implement our ideas. Did you know the average 401k runs out of money just seven to eight years into retirement? Time Magazine, The Wall Street Journal, and many other publications have warned of the difficulty of saving with a 401k. But what if there was a way to create tax-free lifetime retirement income with no stock market risk? Good news, there is. You know, living in fear of the next market dive is not the way I want to live my life. Why would I go out there and take on risk when I don't need to? I have a lot less stress knowing I can't lose any more of my retirement savings in the stock market. Call now to receive your free, no-obligation analysis of what this retirement vehicle could do for you. A comparison to your current retirement plan and a free video that explains this exciting opportunity. Start planning a retirement you can enjoy instead of worrying about future tax increases and stock market losses. Creating income that will last your entire life is the most important thing you'll ever do. Take control of your future. Call now for your free analysis, comparison, and video. Well, welcome back to our last segment. Again, I'm Steve Savant, your host, and of course with us, Ken Davis, CPA and CFP. Ken, when we want to know our Social Security statement, you know, they do send it to us, but a lot of sometimes people just throw it away. I can't believe that. You need to keep it. But if they lost it, what could they do to regain it and get their, their statements back online again? Well, I have to be complimentary of the government this, in this case. www.ssa.gov is the Social Security Administration, and you can simply get on. You set up your own account. They ask you a few questions. Is that hard? No, it's easy. Okay. And and if anybody needs help, they can call me. I'll I'll walk them through mm -hmm. it. It's very simple. Get on, uh, sign up for an account, mm -hmm. and then they can download their statement right off the mm -hmm. web, and into a PDF file. And how many times is the annual? Is it is it at the end of the year they recalibrate it? Well, what? every year they send an annual statement. They're going to look at your most recent earnings statement, and they'll make some adjustments based on you know how the formula mm -hmm. works. And it's complex enough, nobody wants to even think about it. Just have them do it for you. They're happy to do it for mm -hmm. you. And, and by the way, if they, they're widows or widowers, they will compute what your, your survivor benefit is if just by simply calling them. Mm -hmm. uh, however, unfortunately, in order to max out some of these benefits, you can't do the applications online. You really need to go down to the Social Security Administration with specific language, which we can help with. But mm -hmm. you can download the statement. Uh, I'd be happy to look at it. Um, I do these calculations for people for $199. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can take the full report and go to their CPA or attorney or financial planner or insurance agent, mm -hmm. whoever they like to work with on their financial matters. And they'll now have some very useful full report that will help their advisors. And I'm going to tell you, some of the advisors are going to scratch their heads and say, what's this? I mean, how's this work? Right, they I'm really sure. don't know. I talk to, to people all the time. And again, they can call me after I do the calculation, glad to explain it to them, go through it, so that they can you know, make maximum use of it. Well, Ken's a national financial columnist, and he writes to the professional market. And the professional market, when he wrote on Social Security, nobody knew a lot of these ideas as advisors. So it's not surprising to me that this would be a surprise to a lot of people out there that are really helping your clients. One thing I want to talk about, though, I can see all our planning for us who are just on the cusp. We're just prior to 62. We got all this now. We understand it. But what if I'm in the middle? I'm already taking benefits. Is there any any way to pivot on this? Well, I'm going to broaden the statement. I'm going to say with whether you're 30 years old or, or 66 years old, 
going through and having a report, for instance, the financial planners are projecting your retirement income. Mm -hmm. And I, I've used the software, I know what it's like, and they just have, the software just does some of these averages. It's kind of a mm -hmm. one size fits all kind of thing. It does take into effect your age and, and, the, and what mm -hmm. your general earnings are. But it's not specific and it doesn't take advantage of these special strategies mm -hmm. that we've been working with. So even at 40 years old, you provide this to your financial planner and they go, oh, okay. Now they have a number they can plug in and they're going to get a more accurate look at how much you have to put away for retirement. So this is a supplement to the retirement planning and useful. For older ages, certainly a 61 that works. Uh, sometimes people have deferred to 66. They can still take advantage. Sometimes they've, they've made elections, we can stop the election, we can add additional income. There, there is, the rule of thumb, the best time is 61 before you turn mm -hmm. 62, but there's other situations that mm -hmm. we may be able to help. So it, it's, uh, and, and I'm not gonna charge you for something that isn't gonna benefit you. So call me, let me know, and if I think there's a benefit, yeah. I'll help Well, let's out. go back to that because this is a really interesting possib possibility that you bring up. All right, I have people that have already elected their social security benefits. They think that's the way it is. There's mm -hmm. no way to pivot. There's mm -hmm. no kind of flexibility, mm -hmm. but you're making a statement here that basically there may, not all cases, mm -hmm. but there may be some appropriate ways to halt what you're doing and mm -hmm. then reapply that could actually bring more money in. Yeah, for instance, say somebody uh, elected at 66, they're two years into it, they could stop it uh, right before 68 and uh, let it defer for another two years, they'll get 8% per year additional, so a 16% increase in their income. The other thing that people might want to delay is remember mm -hmm. that between 62 and 66, if you're working, the government's going to reduce your Social Security benefits. Mm -hmm. So you might say, gee, I want to go back to work for whatever reason I have to or I'm bored or whatever. You may just say, hey, I'm going to stop my benefits, go to work so they don't reduce my Social Security benefits, allow what's there mm -hmm. to continue to defer to 70, uh, and then turn it back on again then. Now, are they actually reducing the benefits or is it just being taxed more and that reduces well, the benefits? Well, it's really, it, technically it's not a tax. It functions like one. Mm -hmm. Basically, they will take so many dollars for every couple of bucks that you earn, mm -hmm. I believe the formula is they'll, they'll reduce your Social Security income mm -hmm. by a buck. So think, it, it yeah. doesn't make sense to have it turned on mm -hmm. and work. So you, you need to know how to do this. The other thing before we forget is I want to make sure we talk about ages. Well, let's say somebody's a widow or widower. Mm -hmm. Widows can and widowers can benefit from the survivor benefit as early as age 60, and if there's dependents, it could be even earlier. Wow. So age 60, they could be 85 mm -hmm. in assisted living center, their husband just dies, their wife just dies, they could switch to the other one or a prior spouse. Mm -hmm. So you can't just say 61, there's a wide variety. A quick phone call, a quick discussion, we can determine whether there's an opportunity or not. I even have a website I can refer them to, mm -hmm. they can put some quick data in. Mm -hmm. It'll give them a quick and dirty estimate of what the benefit could be before we even engage in any sort of process. Well, the thing that you just brought up, of course, as well is, you know, when we're talking about people at their 30, 35, plugging in their real numbers to see what those real numbers are mm -hmm. going to be in the future, although I do think, like you, I think it's going to be out there. Maybe 70 is going to be the new demarcation mm -hmm. line for people that are under 55. But even if you're taking benefits right now, it's a good time to go ahead and get this calibrated for $200. This is totally worth the benefit. Next week, we're going to talk more about how to make your money work harder for you. And remember, we have the educational tools you need to help your learning experience, and we've partnered with financial professionals who recognize the unique challenges to seniors. For more information on how you can determine if you're maximizing your benefits, just go out to the show's site at www.onefortheMoney.tv. And remember, you can follow me on Twitter and visit me on any of my social media network sites, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google+. That's 